Hello from Bratislava, which is the capital of Slovakia. Slovakia. So have you been to Slovakia before? Yeah, I only grew up through it once. Okay, well, that doesn't really... Well, there's so, a no, cow. I didn't really see much. No. <laughs> and the last time I was in Slovakia, in Bratislava as well, here, I was like a wee young guy. And uh, so now I get to actually explore it with Yurun here. So why do we choose Bratislava, this funny name for the capital in that is like kind of near Hungary, kind of near Austria, sitting along the Danube River, out of all places. Oh, well, what's the cheapest flight I could find for this week? Oh, and how much was it? 35 round trip. That is the beautiful thing about living in Europe. 35 euros round trip for a flight and you get this. See, the thing about living in Canada is that 35 euros would probably take me from Toronto, where I grew up, to my university college town, and that's it. And nothing in between. But here, we get to fly literally across the continent. Speaking of Toronto, look at that. Huh. <laughs> You want to have an espresso? You got the depresso. That sounds sad. I thought this was risotto. I mean, I know it's huge pieces, but it's actually potato dumplings, which is a little confusing because this is also potato dumplings, like pierogies. But this is considered potato dumplings, and this is um, made with rinzla, which is a Slavic cheap cheese, and actually the cheese is from organic farm. And the organic farm is just about 40 minute drive outside Vaslava, so really local still. Mm. And the bacon just adds to it. This one is so nice and creamy. And the potatoes is like soft. It goes well together. Which one would you say is your favorite out of these three? The pierogies? One. Second place? Yeah. Third place. Yeah. This used to be the Jewish quarter right here, but it got demolished in order to build that modern UFO looking bridge and tower that has been kind of like resentment of the city over the time and the population here because they destroyed a synagogue, they destroyed the, the Communist Party who built it, you know, there was a lot of heritage buildings, but now over time it has become somewhat of an icon for the city. Do you like the bridge? The tower? They come for to say yes now. <laughs> After I threw that back out there. Alright, let's see, I'm undecided.
across the underpass to the other side of the city, which is remains of the Jewish quarter, just outside the city walls. You can see these are the walls that got destroyed a little bit on purpose by the queen. And the reason why she knocked down those walls is because she wanted the city to flourish. She wanted the city to, you know, expand. And when she did knock those walls down, it actually worked. And the city, the traders started coming in and the city started growing. What does that mean, Nimon? Uh, it's not just nobody and it's the same in this country. Oh, yes. Apparently, Slovakia has the most castles in the whole country out of all of Europe. Did you know? Yeah, I heard about it. So we're gonna see some castles later. But there's one castle yes. behind us. Oop, okay. Oh, yes, that's one. The famous one. Yes, of Bratislava. Yeah, how old do you think it is? Well, I mean, castles to me are old. So I, I would say maybe 16. <laughs> I have no clue what numbers. About, about eight years old. Eight years old? Yeah. What? Yeah. Why? Well, what? It got destroyed in like the 19th century by fire and then they uh, oh. completely rebuilt it eight years ago. Funded oh. by the EU. Oh. So uh, <laughs> there's some good funding going now. Oh, that's cool. Wait, so you're telling me that it got destroyed by fire. I think I heard the story where it was by some Italian soldiers, but... They were guests, not that they were here for battle or war. Yeah, so the joke goes around that they, uh, uh, the castle never got taken by other parties. Yeah. Uh, however, when the Italians tried to uh, cook a pasta in it, it got burned down. Wow, out of all those battles, but just one pasta dish yeah. burned down the whole a castle. Good pasta. <laughs> Al dante. <laughs> <laughs> Now this is the best viewpoint of the whole entire city. So you go to the castle, and from the castle, you look out. You can see the Christian church right there. You can see all the old town behind us. Alright, so we're on the road, on our road trip through Slovakia because we got a car. But then we saw this place that your room found. What is this name of this place? The Running Sushi. Because we love sushi so much. But the special thing about this place is it's the only convenient about sushi. Or as we say here, it's Running by Running Sushi. Oh yes. In all Slovakia. So look how cute this is. You're doing this literally. We're sitting right beside conveyor belt. I love conveyor belt sushi. Oh my god. Oh yes. Already, look at that. And the chefs behind him just put it out, and then it just comes out here, and then we just select whatever we want. It's just like the time when we were in Tokyo. Hey, what's this? Special Coke. Ooh, wait, can I see? Can I see? Ooh, wait, that's not cola light. <laughs> it looks like a alcoholic drink. <laughs> it smells like Coke. It says Coke. Yeah. Oh, that's such a cool packaging. Let's see. It just doesn't have zero calories, but it has 50% less calories. Ooh, okay, Royal Crown Cola. Yeah. <laughs> We stumbled upon this town in Orava. Orava is actually a region. <laughs> what? We actually drove four okay, hours. Okay, I know we did this. <laughs> yeah, so it's four hours drive from Bratislava. But a good go along with the story, okay? I was setting the mood, right? Very it's like chill mood. The, well, more creepy Halloween esque mood because of this. The weather. Because of the weather. It's dark, gloomy, gray, and we have this 
dark age medieval castle that looms over the whole town and sure maybe in summer this place looks like more of a paradise in the mountains but right now is very creepy and very eerie haunted feeling to it exciting so we're gonna climb up to go see the castle that looks over Orava. What do you see? Uh, a road leading further to the castle. <laughs> <laughs> Some nice plants and another gate. Okay. That's it. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can see it. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, That's the road. Oh. So from Arafa Castle, we came to this quaint town about 18 minutes, 10 actually 10 minutes away. What's the name? It's called Doni Kubin. And if I'm butchering that, I'm sorry Slovakian fans. <laughs> but it's a beautiful, beautiful town in Orava, the region. And the cool thing about Slovakia is that because it's a small sized country, depending on where you are, you're near a different country. So Bratislava, we were near Austria. And now here, we're actually really close to Poland itself. But you can tell from the very mountainous regions, it's very different from Bratislava side. Very, very cute town. Less haunted and eerie than where we were before. All right, what do we have here? This dark liquid. Kofola. Kofola? Yeah. Where's Kofola? Kofola is, uh, I was told it was a, a drink that they made when Coca Cola was not allowed in the country yet. Yeah. The communist no. regime. So they make Kofola. Uh, but it doesn't taste <laughs> right. the same, I heard. So but it's my first time trying it. Okay, let's have a sip, let's see. Because the color is much darker than regular Coke. It smells like licorice. Oh. It makes it like some buka. Mm -hmm. It tastes, um, I don't know, it kind of tastes like some, like, it's hard to say, like licorice. I don't think you would oh, like it. Oh, no, I hate licorice. <laughs> so, in the middle of this town, we saw this Asian restaurant called San Bistro, and me and Jerome just had to pop in and see what it's like because on the menu it's Vietnamese. Lo and behold, the owners are Vietnamese as well, they serve Vietnamese dishes. So here we have this nice hot steaming bowl of pho for this cold army day. And it smells very aromatic, just like pho. It has beef pieces and the same noodles. I have high hopes. The, I was talking to the owner and he's been living here in Slovakia for 15 years. But he goes back to Vietnam every single year. And we're tired out. Ooh, look at this. This is so great meeting other Vietnamese people abroad, especially in Slovakia, of all places, too. I just want to show you really, really quick about where we're staying for the night and it's absolutely gorgeous, about 25 euros, which is ridiculous for me and Jeroen because it's two people for price of a meal in Western Europe, but here in Slovakia on our Slovakian road trip, we got this gorgeous, just right, so we have this private balcony, and then just right outside our balcony are the tennis courts. A little chilly for me to be playing tennis, but this is adjacent, this is part of the property. And then, this, of course, this beautiful church just right here. So casual. Oh, and I am literally staring out at these beautiful views of these mountains. And I'm going to show you that. This autumn road trip in Slovakia is just beyond gorgeous, isn't it, Hasi? 
very beautiful. Wow, and how did you find this road that we're driving to on right now? Looking on Google Maps. Oh, <laughs> isn't he nifty? And then look at this. There's this lake over here with a small town. Surrounded by mountains that the foliage so beautiful. So where are we heading to? The biggest city, the second biggest city in Slovakia, which is all the way near Ukraine. I think you're pronouncing it better. Koshes? Yeah, that is it. Koshes. <laughs> Koshis. 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 So, I don't know. Yeah, but we're having this wonderful road trip on our way there through, um, and then this mountain range is called the... the Lower Tatra Mountains. Lower Tatra Mountains. Wow. Who knew Slovakia was such a gem? Beautiful. Ooh, I just love driving through Slovakia because we're literally just passed by such a gorgeous castle. What, what, where's the castle name? Wait, wait, wait. Spice Castle. Spice Castle is one of the best. B biggest. Oh, biggest? Yeah. Most of ruins, so it's not the best anymore. Oh. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest uh, in Europe. Biggest complexes. That's pretty a big deal though because I feel like Europe the continent of castles and where they still have nobility to have the biggest castle out of the whole continent is quite an uh, accolade, you know? True, true. And it's a UNESCO heritage site as well. So. Yeah. And it's all along our road trip to Koshes. Space Castle. Space. Am I serving it right? We made it to our final stop of our Slovakian road trip tour and we are in... <laughs> I think you pronounce it better. <laughs> Kosai. Oh yeah, Kosai. But I don't even think that that's how you... Well, Kostis. Kostis. If you are Slovakian or you've been here and you know how the proper pronunciation, let us know below in the comments. But anyways, this... So we are going to Mapa Yulinga. Mispronouncing names is my thing. But this is the main street, and the main street goes all the way from all the way down there, all the way down here, but it's split into two parallels from the state theater. So we're going to explore, and all the historical cool things that you want to see is just on this street itself. So yeah, it's a really cool small uh, city center. Yeah, easy to explore, but so beautiful already. Like this building, I don't know what it is, but what a beautiful blue color it is. The story has it is that this beggar collected so much money from the people and made a career out of it that he didn't have to pay any taxes from the money that he collected and that he made. So with all that money, he was able to afford to buy this house and create this house on one of the most prestigious streets in the whole city. I mean, that's not the rags to riches story that is aspirational. I don't know what is. I think this has got to be one of my favorite parts of the city because as you can hear in the background aside from the fountains it's Mariah Carey The fountains are dancing to it Yeah, the fountains are dancing to it And we're just sitting on this bench casually enjoying the sights from the state theater What do you think of Slovakia in general so far? Very friendly people and nice yeah. nature and uh, also very pretty town. 
Yeah, especially here where everyone is like in a pastel color, different. Look at that! Look at that! It goes all the way down. <laughs> but very unexpected, and I'm really glad that we took that cheap Ryanair flight. <laughs> Okay, we're already going to have some traditional Slovakian food, but on our way to our reservation, we see 50 cent sliced pizza. Is this for real? I literally paid only 50 cents. Mm. For this pizza, mm. that's so gooey with cheese. So nice. This is ridiculous. Should we even go to our reservations and get more pizza? Mm. <laughs> Such a cute restaurant. It's literally decorated like a grandma's kitchen. Look at this. <laughs> I love this. We are in this cute restaurant called Man Melina. Look at this place. Ooh. Oh. Look at this menu too. And all these little trinkets. We have a little appetizer, some bread, and this unique pork dip. Here we have this red, ooh, vampire like cranberry looking color soup. It's very thin because it's inspired by borscht. And it is borscht, but more like Polish variant. And then here I have slow roasted duck on beets and pancakes. Wow. wow. The flavors mix so well. The duck is very savory. And the beans are very fresh. That's wonderful. I hope you've enjoyed Slovakia in the autumn just as much as we did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a like and leave a comment below because in the next video, we have more European detours and romantic small town getaways to take you on with us.